Welcome back. United Nations human rights investigators say atrocities amounting to war crimes and crimes against humanity have been committed in the Democratic Republic of Congo's Kasai region. In a report presented to the Human Rights Council, independent experts say both sides were involved in the crimes and they called on authorities to prosecute perpetrators and provide justice to victims in the Kasai region. Based on interviews with 524 victims, witnesses and perpetrators, the UN report focused on human rights violations in the region where the year-long insurrection killed up to 5,000 people, forcing some 1.5 million from their homes. If you want them to contribute to rebuild their society rather than to be a threat or even a time bomb within their own society, because when you have been so young and witnessed the killing of so many people, have been involved with decapitation or witnessed the rape okay. of your own parents mm -hmm. or public rapes, I'm sorry, there is so many things they have seen these children that they really need very special, dedicated, and uh, long-term care if, they, if you don't want them to be part of the future. The police in Zimbabwe have arrested two suspects over a grenade blast that killed two people and injured 47 others at a campaign rally for the president last month. Earlier, Mr. Menangagwa, who replaced veteran leader Robert Mugabe in a bloodless coup in November last year, says he believed the attack had been carried out by the G40 group. The G40 is a faction of the ruling ZANU-PF party, which wanted Mugabe to be succeeded by his wife, Grace. Mr. Monagagwa, however, did not accuse Grace Mugabe of any involvement in the attack. Meanwhile, the Zimbabwe army has promised to remain neutral in elections scheduled to be held at the end of this month. At a news conference, Colonel Overson Mguisi voiced disappointment at what he called rumours that the army is supporting President Emerson Mnangagwa. He says that the military presence at rally staged by the governing ZANU-PF party is for security reasons. The military played a key role in forcing Robert Mugabe from office last year, paving the way for Mr. Menengagwa to take office. Several army officers are now in his cabinet, including former army chief, Constantino Chiwenga, who is his deputy. And indeed, Nigel Yamutumbu, Zimbabwean journalist, joins us now for more. Nigel, what more can you tell us, uh, especially first about the blast in Bulawayo? Two suspects we hear have been arrested. Well, uh, the, the two suspects that were arrested um, following the, the explosion were released. Um, first, on account that it is not constitutional for them to have been incarcerated for more than 48 hours without being tried uh, in court. As a result, uh, they have had to be released. Another suspect, uh, according to media reports, um, is still within the, the custody of, 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 of the military. However, that has not uh, been uh, publicized officially, as it were, uh, outside of the media report based on news sources. So, Nigel, are the police any closer into perhaps discovering the motive for the attack? Um, as, as far as, as, as the public, uh, as far as Zimbabweans are concerned, uh, the police have not yet uh, really gotten to the bottom of the matter uh, by way of either really identifying the weapon uh, exactly that, that, that was used, um, its, its, its form, uh, and then and so forth. They are yet to even uh, really uh, identify perhaps uh, the exact people or person that could have been behind the explosion. And uh, what we have for now are the rumors being peddled within uh, social media and within uh, the, the, the media outside of uh, what they have told us to say there is a, an offer for a reward. So as it stands, it really remains unclear whether they are having any strong leads that may lead to a firm conclusion to this serious matter. And finally, Nigel, elections are coming up at the end of the month and um, the Zimbabwe army is promising to remain neutral, denying support for the president. What are you hearing? Well, one would have uh, expected 
Yes, that uh, the the the, the uh, press conference, the, the statement by the army today, uh, is is noble in that they have um, really said, well, uh, they will respect uh, the constitutional process that is occurring. But um, one would have expected that they would have gone beyond and um, really uh, cleared themselves of the 2002 statements by the military that they will not salute any person without liberation war credentials, and to have also categorically come out to say that um, they will respect uh, the, the outcome, the will of the people, they will uh, salute any person that would have uh, emerged victorious. Uh, and also, it's a, it's a bit of a concern that uh, the army says they will assist the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, when one of the sticking issues has been around demilitarization of the election management body. So while it is noble that they have um, ascribed that they'll uh, be uh, working in line with the Constitution, it's unfortunate that they still will be involved in the election. All right, thank you so much. Nigel Yamatubu, journalist in Zimbabwe. Finally on the program, Modestin Munga Zalia is a female boxer in the Democratic Republic of Congo who is seeking recognition in the male-dominated sport. But lack of investment and support in boxing means that she has no access to proper training facilities and often has to struggle to stay in form. While well, Modestin has won various medals in local and regional bouts and plans to become a boxing champion in future. Modestine Munga Zalia is warming up as she prepares to train with her coach at Kinshasa Tata Rafael Stadium in the heart of the sprawling capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Training twice a day, the 20-year-old boxer is amongst a small group of female boxers in the DR Congo who want recognition in the male-dominated sport. Modestine bobs, sidesteps, and sticks stiff left and right jabs during a sparring session as she prepares for her next competition later this year, the National Provincial Kinshasa Tournament. Like many female boxers around the world, she says she's inspired by boxing legend Muhammad Ali's daughter, Layla Ali. My boxing idol is Muhammad Ali's daughter, Layla Ali. I used to watch a lot of boxing matches when I was in school. One day I saw Muhammad Ali's daughter boxing on television and winning a belt. I was really impressed by that. It was the first time that I saw a female boxer. Fired and encouraged me to start boxing. Here, Outside the legendary stadium that in 1974 saw Muhammad Ali defeat the favorite George Foreman in one of the greatest heavyweight bouts in history, Modestine is going through her paces. But lack of financial support means she can only train outside the dilapidated stadium instead of in a fully equipped gym. We don't have the means to rent a gym hall to train. It costs a lot of money. Where you need your manager to pay that money. I don't have any of that. I only have my coach who fights for me and who also trains, but we don't have any other choice but to train here. Despite this fact, Madestine and her coach remain optimistic that the tide is changing for women in boxing in DR Congo. I remain hopeful. I hope that one of these days I can make a living from boxing professionally. Hopefully we will have people who can support this sport because our government, our sports ministry does not support female boxing. I'm passionate about this sport and I will not be discouraged. Although there are no official figures on the number of women in boxing, it's estimated that there are about 30 women boxers currently active compared to 100 male boxers. That's how we bow out of Network Africa at this time. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.